Okay, today I'm going to show you how to create a video meme using Camtasia. So first a disclaimer, I'm going to use this video from YouTube. I live in the US where the copyright laws can be pretty stringent. So I picked a video that I think should be pretty safe. It's just someone having a very difficult time parking. Um, but I also requested permission just to be on the safe side. However, it would most likely fall under fair use because I'm using it for educational purposes. It's non-commercial and memes are generally considered parodies. At least it most likely will be in this case. However, if you have any questions, I'm not an attorney. Please seek legal advice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this video of this person having a difficult time parking. You can see that the video has a sound, so I'm just going to scrub through it and this will work for my purposes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to download this video using this online video converter.com. There are tons of utilities out there that you can use. I just bookmark this and use it. And I'm going to take the YouTube URL, drop it in here and choose my format. Um, if I just needed the sound, I would stick with MP3. I'm going to choose MP4, click start. It uh, converts the video, gets it ready for download, and momentarily I'll have a download button. I actually already downloaded it, so I'm just going to jump right into my download. Oops, under my downloads. And you can see here's my download. So now I'm going to go into Camtasia. Um, I'm obviously working on a Mac. Uh, Camtasia also comes uh, in a PC variety. The options are a little bit different, but it's the same principle. In fact, PC has a few more options as it is with most things. Now I'm just going to take this and I'm going to drag it down into my timeline. And I'm going to zoom out of my timeline so I can see the entire video strip. And now we're ready to start working. One of the problems is, as you can tell by these little lines here, there's audio. And I don't need the audio. You never see audio in uh, video memes. So you have this great option in Camtasia where you could just right click on it and choose separate video and audio. Now I'm just going to select the audio file. Audio files are always very easy to spot, and I'm just going to tap the delete key to delete it. I'm also going to go ahead and save my project. Call this video meme. I love Camtasia, but it does have a tendency to crash a lot, particularly on a Mac. So I save right away and I save often. So the next thing I'm going to do is adjust my canvas here. You can do that by right clicking somewhere in the canvas and selecting adjust canvas. And you can manually enter your height and width or you can click and drag these. Now the problem I ran into and I'll show you the problem and then I'll tell you the solution. So the problem I ran into is I was able to drag it to get it the way I want it horizontally, but I didn't want to add text to the top and the bottom of the video. Typically what you'll see is what almost looks like a frame up at the top. Um, sometimes the frame is black with white text, sometimes it's white with black text. Um, we're going to go with the white with black text option. The only problem is that if you click and drag these handles, it moves in both directions. And typically with most tools, you can hold down something to turn that off. Like you can hold down the option key or the shift key, something like that. And that just wasn't working. So it was actually me who figured this out because I actually reached out to Camtasia on Twitter and asked if it was possible to use Camtasia to create video memes. Um, they said, alas, no, but I just wasn't totally willing to take no for an answer. But my daughter came up with the solution where after you get it, kind of split it in half, then you can just select the video itself and drag it down. So that actually worked out perfectly. I don't have to have it perfectly in 
the shot. I just want to make sure that I don't have any edges along the outside. So, and once I select outside the canvas, it just automatically crops it, which is nice. Um, I'm actually going to go back in here and choose white for the color. I could have done that all in one fell swoop. Um, now you can see I didn't drag it all the way to the bottom, so I'm just going to use my arrow key to get it down there. All right, it's where I want it now, and I like this amount of frame. Uh, I might go just a little bit smaller. Click Apply. Drag this up a little bit. All right, that works out fine. So now I can add my text by going into annotations, picking the font I want to use. I'm going to adjust any of these anyway, and I'm going to just click and drag it down to its own layer. So Camtasia works like most tools like Photoshop, Illustrator, any tools like this where you're working with layers. So the video is on the bottom layer, and now you can add all kinds of uh, layers on top of it and get things just the way you want it. So, whoops, I don't want this to move, so I'm actually going to lock this layer here. And I do that by just clicking this uh, lock icon. If for whatever reason you want to turn off that layer temporarily, you can click the eye icon. I just want to lock it so that I don't have to be overly careful when moving the text. And now I'm just going to click and drag this out. It doesn't have to be too precise. I do find that selecting and dragging the text box is a little tricky. And here we go. I don't have to have this exact because I'm going to left align my text. If you want to center your text, I encourage you to be a little more exact and get this in the center. Um, for me, that's just not important. So I'm just going to kind of nudge it to the left using my left arrow key. Okay, and now I want to adjust this font. Obviously, I don't want white font against a white background. You get to those knobs by clicking on this gear icon here. And I'm going to left align it I don't want that drop shadow, so I'm going to turn that off here. I'm just clicking and dragging everything. Go back into my text, change it to black. Uh, Helvetica works fine for video memes like this. If I were creating an image meme, I'd always use impact. That's the one that you see everywhere. But in uh, video memes, I tend not to see that really heavy impact. However, I am going to make it a little smaller. Okay, that works. And now I'm just going to write me settling into 2018. Now, the only problem that I'm running into is this video is really, really long. This person is having a very difficult time parking. It's pretty ridiculous which is why I like it. So we're going to shorten it by one. Um, there's really no point after the car finally makes it into the spot. So I'm gonna delete this part by getting this where I want it on the timeline. And then I'm gonna hold down the shift key and just drag it um, to select this. And then I'm gonna right click and delete the range. Oops, I missed the little spot. I can just click that and hit delete. There's also too much on the front end. Don't really care about that. So I'm gonna start it right here. So again, I'm going to click and drag. Now I could choose delete range, but you can see the problem here is that it leaves this gap and we don't want that. So when I'm deleting any part of a video, that's not at the end. I always choose ripple delete range because whichever layers aren't locked down will all move to the left when they're deleted. And if I deleted a section in the middle, you'll see this kind of zipper effect, um, which is also nice, but it's outside the scope of this tutorial. So I won't go too far down the rabbit hole. 
So I'm going to check it out here. Yes, this is what I want. However, it's too long. You can see this video is almost three minutes long. You're not going to see a video I mean that's three minutes long. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the clip speed. So you can see when I choose that, I get this little strip at the bottom. The easiest way to adjust the clip speed is just to click and drag it. If I drag it to the left, it's going to make the clip shorter, so obviously the clip will speed up. If I drag it to the right, it's going to make the clip longer, and so obviously it's going to slow things down. You can get very specific by entering the speed here under clip speed. Um, I don't need to do that. I actually do that in my regular videos. Again, that's outside the scope of this tutorial. But I'm going to click and drag this quite a bit. I think I'm going to shoot for 20 seconds. We'll see how that works out. Because this is going to be ridiculous anyway, and we don't want it, obviously, to take three minutes. So I'm going to see how this looks. Yeah, I kind of like that effect. See the person's struggling without it taking up too much time. I'm actually going to click and drag it just a little bit more. Again, you do it to your taste. Yeah, that works. You definitely get the idea. Actually, just even a little bit more. Let me see what that looks like. And you can stop and start this by either uh, clicking the play button here or by tapping your spacebar, which is what I will typically do. And now I obviously don't need my text to extend beyond the video, so I'm just going to click and drag that. And I want it to end at the same place. That's fine. Okay, now we can test it again. This is, uh, these bounding boxes are only showing up because I have uh, that layer selected. So I'm just going to click anywhere to deselect it. Click the play button. Just kind of check it out. Yeah, this looks fine. So I'm going to save it. And now I can export it. And you do that by going to share, export. I'm just going to export this as an MP4, which is pretty ubiquitous. And now it's finished. It's going to drop it wherever I dropped the video, which was on my desktop. So I'm just going to double click this to open it up in QuickTime. Pretty crazy. Move ahead. And there you go. Actually, I didn't get this exactly right. So I'm going to zoom in here, aha, and I'm going to click and drag that to make sure that it ends in the same spot. I should have been a little more careful. Then I'll export it again. And let's open this again, see if this works out better. Perfect. There you go.